Let's get started and welcome our first speaker. I'd like to introduce digital artist and creative director, Lucy Hardcastle. Hi, Lucy. Hi. Thanks for being here tonight. Uh, I think we should start by talking about your work and um, I've called you a digital artist, but you've created an amazing virtual interactive 3D experience in partnership with Chanel, which feels almost like a video game. So how would you describe what you do? Well, I would definitely say that I'm a creative director within my own practice, but I overall see myself as an interdisciplinary designer, and I think I love making things that are interactive because it means you kind of are able to create something that's a sensorial experience for your audience. Excellent, excellent. And it seems to me that shape and texture play a big part in your art. Can you tell me a bit more about the types of themes you like to explore? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I see shapes and colours as a language of themselves, but the kinds of themes I love to cover are sensuality and virtual space, and in a broader sense, the relationship that we have with technology. Right, cool. So to give you a bit of context, we've asked our speakers to pick Adobe stock assets to create a unique image based on our current visual trend. Every few months, Adobe creates a collection of assets based on what's trending right now. And for this summer, it's creative reality. These collections are great if you're looking for images around a similar theme or if you want to get an idea of what's hot at the moment or maybe you're searching for inspiration. We'll put a link to the creative reality visual trend in the comments so you can have a look. You'll see all these lush, tropical, idealized images of almost a psychedelic intensity. And one way of looking at it is these fantasy worlds could be a reaction to or an escape from our reality, which is kind of uncertain at the moment. So Lucy, how have you interpreted creative reality? Well, because there's such a huge range of images and 3D assets on Adobe stock, I really saw it as an opportunity to combine things that wouldn't normally be placed together. So you could make something that feels natural or supernatural or completely digital. Right, excellent. So with that said, I think we're all looking forward to seeing how that comes to life. Over to you to take us into another dimension, Lucy. OK, so the first thing that I was starting with was Adobe Dimension, which is fairly new to me. Um, but there's kind of a whole range of downloadable 3D assets on that. So I basically started with this splash shape. Okay. And then you kind of have all the tools here, so you're able to kind of zoom in and decide what uh, position you want the shape in. Right. Would so, you say dimension is easy to get into if you're a novice? Yes, yeah, yeah. I believe it was created for uh, packaging designers originally, right. but there seems to be yeah, a lot of different things that you could play with. Right, and the stock library is quite extensive, isn't it? Yes, yeah. yeah. Excellent. So yeah, we've got the shape. So I would next pick the texture. So I pick this one. So everything will come up here in your kind of environment. Right. And you have the base color, and you're able to basically alter it if you want to in Photoshop, okay. um, which is what I went and did for my piece. Now, I've used a number of different 3D softwares, and I have to say, the way you added that texture was extremely easy in comparison <laughs> to some other softwares that are out there. Oh, would, yeah, would you, would absolutely. You agree? Yeah, yeah, Excellent. for sure. Excellent. Um, just going to tweak this a little bit. I love the way it all integrates with Photoshop and back. Yeah. yeah, and then you can just do Command Save, which I just did, and it will have changed it in here. So it's right. already kind of cropped it. Right. It, it, yeah, it's already what I kind of wanted it to wow. be. Wow, great time saver, wow. Yeah, yeah. And then we will start putting in the environment. So I used options that were already there. Right. Um, so you basically need to put in a backdrop for it to render out the textures. That's right. something that I kind of learned myself. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to move this forward a little bit. And I believe you're able to match the object to the background in terms of perspective, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I can show you that feature. Right, right. Um, let me just get this to fit. So yeah, if you click on environment, okay. 
and you, then you can click match image and it'll kind of line up okay. what you have for the lighting and the background. Gosh, that is so easy. Yeah. Wow. But it didn't, didn't like that, so I'm going to okay. go back right, cool. and keep it how it was. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then another thing that I use is the focus set. So you click on it and then it's already on your cursor and yeah, you click on the area and then the render preview has already come up so you can kind of see wow. what's going to happen. Okay. So I made this shape first and then I applied um, one of the starter models just of a sphere. Sure. And then obviously that needs really scaling down. Yeah. So what's quite nice about um, Dimension is that you are able to, um, well, have things, you can see it's already reacting to one another and creating shadows. Okay. So it really does look 3D. Yeah, it's sure. not that you're just kind of plonking things together. Sure, sure. Um, so yeah, place sign here, probably a bit too big. Do you do a lot of animation what you saw? I do. Yeah. I tend to work with a lot of animators and then kind of try and teach myself and do tests. So okay. as a creative director, I think it's really important to um, know how things work right. so that you're able to brief people okay. properly. Um, yeah, so I also downloaded this texture, right. which is what I used on the sphere. So to apply it to the shape, you just need to have that object selected, right. basically. And then you can rotate that as well. Excellent. Um, just to play around with it. There you go. Yeah, so I basically had something like that. And then um, I clicked render in here. And you can choose all your settings. Um, obviously, we already have it ready now. Right. Um, but one great thing that you can do while it is rendering is you're able to um, take a screenshot of where it is currently. Right. So you can already take it away as a PSD or PNG file and right. play with it. Right, excellent. Yeah. And I believe that Dimensions got a cloud-based renderer using V-Ray. Oh, I'm really? Not, I'm not mistaken, yeah. So it's actually really useful. Even if you're using a different software and you bring the model in, you can render it directly through dimensions. You don't have to use your graphics card on your computer. Oh, I see. Yeah. OK, cool. That's good to know. So yeah, now we'll go into Photoshop. Um, and basically, I have the original layers of just the rendered image here, right. which I'll take, because otherwise, it'll just take too long. OK. Yeah, yeah. So we've got this here, and basically when it exports, you have all the layers. So you have the alpha layer, the normals, yep, yep. And this without a background. Right. Um, and then for the actual background of this image, I started importing um, some images that I already have off the library. Right. So one thing um, that I wanted to show you that was really great about using Adobe Stock was that I was able to search based on my own images. Right. Um, so that was a really great way of, you know, because it's such a broad, of course, yeah. broad stock website, yeah. you don't really know where to start. Sure, sure. So I started with the written phrase, microscopic nature, and right. then I brought in one of my own images, which looks like this, wow. which is not digital. Um, <laughs> it's something that was a textile <sighs> material test. Right. Um, I was going to say it looks like a good render. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I love about my work that sometimes people can't tell whether it's real or right, not. Right, 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 yeah. So yeah, I was able to drag in the uploaded image with microscopic nature. And these were the kinds of images that I found that I chose to use. Sure. So that was a really great way of getting my head around how Adobe Stock can work. Um, so we've got this one that I also found. Okay. And then I'll just bring everything in first. And then we'll start putting it together. I love the way it just pops up in, in Photoshop seamlessly. Yeah. <laughs> I know, so quick. The time saver, yeah. OK, and then, so this one will go on the top. So now it's just a case of really playing around with the final parameters in Photoshop. All right. 
Um, so I'm pretty sure this one was underneath. Okay. And I'm pretty sure I... Are you, are you someone that names your layers or do you not name your layers? Do you get lazy like me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, lazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 52 different layers and you just right clicking to find the... That's what I end up doing anyway. Well, I feel like if you can see... Like, if you can see it, you can select it, right? Yeah, yeah. That's just how my brain okay. works. Um, yeah. And then it was just kind of a case of playing around and okay. I... Um, so you put a hard light? Yes. On that. Yeah. And I have a little bit of experience in um, retouching, so I love tools like Dodge and Burn, All right. just to bring up mm. the highlights and contrast of everything. So are you awake on Cintiq or a mouse user? I am a mouse user. A mouse user? Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. Or just like the really, really ba like total basics Bare of bone Photoshop. Basic, yeah, okay. I mean, anything that's just going to give it a bit more of depth. I yeah. mean, I feel like with people who are self-taught in lots of different programs like I am, yep. you kind of just teach yourself what yep. you need to know. Yeah, that's, that's me, 100%. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, now it's just a case of doing a bit of dodge and burn, and then, yeah, we'd be finished. Oh, that's really strong. Okay. <laughs> Turn down the exposure. So yeah, it's kind of like looking for where the... Certain spots to add some contrast. Yeah, like that you can see around here. Right. You can see the detail of the bubble wrap coming through. Right, right. It's too strong. Need to turn these exposures down. I guess if you're at home, you'd be here for hours tweaking and tweaking. Yeah, 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 completely. Yeah, that's what I was kind of doing when I was playing around with everything. We never finish, do we? We just press no. pause, don't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what we do. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so it's just a case of playing, really. Mm. You're going to add some contrast to the, the foreground layers or just the background? Yeah, let's play with the foreground as well. Yeah. Um, I love playing with curves as well. Right. Yep, That's yep. like easy. Yeah, sure. There you go. Yeah, that's really cool. It's really popping now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yep. now I feel like these need to be stronger. Okay. Um, or maybe if I just bring this one up. Brighter or darker? I feel like richer, richer, so darker. More saturation, less saturation? More saturation, More saturation. always. Okay. Mm, As you're creating this, how would you define this? If I wasn't a creative and I said, what's that? How would you, how would you define what you're creating right now, simply? Um, I would say it's a digital image uh, that uses a combination of techniques. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's too simple. It all looks very molecular and very kind of yes. globally and organic. Yeah. I mean, I love, I kind of love finding ways to bring science into the work that right, I do. Right, right, right. I was going to say, where do you get your inspiration from? Yeah, yeah, I love, I mean, it probably sounds really boring, but I love work that feels really grounded in research and right. like it's about something okay. rather than just being about artistic license right, okay. necessarily. Okay. Um, yeah. It looks like life is being created from the embryotics, embryotic stage or something. <laughs> like yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's nice. When you kind of, yeah, mix up the different layers so you... Right. It's like, is it plastic? Is it a mm. rock formation? Right, right. But yeah, I find this type of work really relaxing. 
Yeah, it almost looks hypnotic. I was watching your, uh, your ID documentary. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. And the music they played and the way the, the atoms were moving, it almost hypnotised me when I was watching it. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. So, cool. So, yeah. Excellent. So, is that a wrap? Yeah, I'd say so. That's a wrap. So what can I say? That's amazing. I love how you've used the visual search function to find an image that's visually similar to your own image. It's something that makes uh, Adobe Stock quite unique, using the power of machine learning to show your results that match the colors, tones, and the composition of the image uh, you search. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I mean, it was a great way to be able to get a handle on the mass that is Adobe Stock and right. figure out what would make sense for me and my work. Right, excellent. And it's, a great, uh, it's great to see Adobe Dimension getting a, a shot of the action. And if you didn't know before tonight, uh, you know now, Adobe Stock has a rapidly growing collection of 3D assets. Lots of them are, are, are standard assets, so you can get them as part of the free one month trial. But for premium assets, and it applies to videos and images, you can buy credit packs so you can choose your credit packs and uh, work it however you want using the premium and standard assets. So Lucy, thanks again for joining us and uh, it's been really inspiring watching you demo your work. Thanks for having me. Excellent.